Welcome to my channel where I will talk about things you don't learn in school and what you only learn on the job. Today we will take a look at setting up bare metal server with the SXI. I will be using Hetzner as a provider for the server, however, the setup is roughly the same whether you have a physical server at home or use another provider such as OVH. The reason for using Hetzner is that it's cheap. You can easily get a box to play around with for around 30 euro with enough resources. The hardware, however, will be old, but nothing that will cause any issues. So let's take a look at the Hetzner website. Here you can go to Dedicated and look at the auction servers. These servers will generally be cheaper because they don't have to be set up. On the first page, you can see we get a range of about 35 euro to 38 euro. Generally, you want to look for one that has a gigabit connection. Yeah, here it looks like we found one. It has 8 gigs of RAM times 4, 2, two terabyte hard drive should be enough for our case. Here we will add a public key so we can uh, do SSH for any recovery things we want to do. So this removes the need that we need to have a password in case it's apply a public key. So I will go ahead and copy my public key and add it inside here. Yeah, I accidentally had another one already in my cart, which I will remove. And we can go ahead to check out. So just follow the steps from checkout as to create an account and to add your credit card information. Other than that, it will then email you when the server is ready for you to connect to. So once you have access to the console, you can go to support and we will need to request access to a KVM console. Here you will choose your server, you will say remote console and you can choose either immediately or as soon as possible or you can set up an appointment. I did as soon as possible because it, they are generally fairly quick to give you access. Once you have access, they will email you a link and a username and password. Once you log in, go ahead and click on the click to open KVM console. This will download a JLNP file and this is a Java applet. Um, I did notice that this only works on Windows and did not get it to work on Mac. So go ahead and open it and allow all the security issues that it says. We won't be running this for long. This will then connect to the Hatsune server and give you a GUI for the uh, VM. Uh, before we go further, we need to go ahead and download the ESSI VMware ISO. So go ahead, search in Google, usually the first one. Um, you will have to create a an account. I already have one, so I will go ahead and log in. Um, this will also give you a license key which you can go ahead and assign later. I won't go over that in this video. 
So go ahead and download the ISO image. And go back to your applet. And choose the ISO image. This would then mount this image remotely to the KVM console, which will mount it, I think, as a USB drive. Here, I will go ahead and reset the hardware because I need to get into the boot menu. This will probably take a few tries. Um, you have to figure out the key. I believe for me it was either F10 or 11. And eventually we will get to the boot menu. Here you can see it took me a few tries. So eventually I did get it working. Here you can see I was able to boot into the ESXi installer and I sped this up for you. So I think this took me about 30 minutes almost. So go grab a coffee and just wait for it. So now that it's booted from the ISO you can choose continue to install the system. Accept and continue. Here you can choose the hard drive that you want to use. Just choose the first one. Choose your default keyboard layout and set a root password. Uh, you will need a capital letter, a number, and a symbol. Make sure you write this password down somewhere as this will be your root password and the only one you can use to make any changes to your system. Here we have a support warning uh, because this is old hardware. In the future, it might not get supported, but that's okay. And we then go on with the SXI installation, which is pretty fast. So here it will say that it installed successfully and just go ahead and reboot. With Hatchner, I believe it will give you a IP address by using DHCP. So there is no setup you have to do there. However, you will not get a IPv6 address as E6i actually does not support the, I believe it's FE08 address for the gateway.
So here you can verify that it is booting your SIGSI. And once it boots, you will see the IP address that is given to it. Here in my case, you can see it's 144.76.139.150. You can ignore the static IPv6 address. So go ahead back to your browser and go to the IP that is written there for you. This will have a connection that's not private because it uses a self-signed SSL certificate. Just go ahead and ignore that and it will load the UI. Do note that this may be slow depending on where you are relative to where your server is. EXSI is meant to be loaded in a physical area and not from the internet, so keep that in mind as well. So go ahead and log in with root as the username and the password that you set up earlier. So once it loads, just go ahead and click OK. And the first thing you will want to do is we want to secure this. Currently, it's open to the World Wide Web, which means you will probably get bots from China trying to gain access to it. So go ahead to Networking, to Firewall Rules, and you want to change two settings. One for the web access. And you will set this to either the IP you have or if you can, get a VPN server and set an IP to that one. For me, in my case, I have a VPN server that I'm connecting from, hence this IP will never change and I should never lose access to my server. Then you want to go ahead and do the same thing for SSH as well. This concludes the basic setup for ES6i server with Hetchner. Stay tuned for part 2, which will show how to set up a router as well as setting up IPv6 for your service.